It's cold and lonely in this dusty hotel Everyone I know has got something to sell Must have been crazy, why did I ever roam? Time to rev me my Chevy and get me back to my home A west wind give me direction Oh, black top plays a trail for me There is no place as sweet as your face Carolina skies, that's where I long to be The mountains blew a summer rain on the pine Robin singing songs on the telephone lines I won't be happy Till the sun starts to rise And the colors of morning go twinkling in your eyes The west wind, give me direction Oh, black top, blaze a trail for me There is no place as sweet as your face Carolina skies, that's where I long to be Wanna steal a kiss by an old willow wood Wanna touch the meadow where my granddaddy stood Wanna play guitar, watch a cool river flow It's a dream that let won't let me go So west wind, give me direction Oh black top, blaze a trail for me there is no place Mama! as sweet as your Mama! place Carolina skies, that's where I long to be Okay, let me have it. Of what, Franny? The lecture. I mean, you're mad at me, right? I mean, that's why you're in here with whatchamacallit and ignoring me. Franny? How's the bank, Jake? Hmm? Gray on gray. That's exciting. You know, I bet you never once dreamed in Technicolor, huh? <laughs> Mama, I'm home! Franny! Mama's gone. Gone where? She died, Franny. Died? She died three days ago. We tried to find you, Francis. Nobody knew where you were. We had no idea how to get in touch with you. But the doctor said she had six months to live. I was there when he said it. As much as six months. He said she had as much as, not for sure. She wanted to see you. The whole time I was taking care of her, she kept talking about you. I'm sorry. Sorry, doesn't cut it this time, Nat, Nat, Franny. Natalie, she's had a rough couple of months. Do you know what it's like to bathe your own mother, Franny? Her body was so tiny I could pick her up in my arms. Where is she? Every morning she'd look out the window hoping you'd come down the road. Hoping she'd live long enough to hear another one of your Stupid jokes. Or your latest R-rated adventure. Did they close her eyes, Nat? She's buried, Francis. We had the funeral. When we couldn't find you, we had no choice. 
You were gonna miss my old mother's funeral. Where were you? Me? Oh, I was probably up to no good. You know me, Jake? Think about it. A jerk. A real jerk. You know how you said jerk guys were my specialty? Hmm. Mama said it was time to outgrow them. She wanted me to be settled and normal. Good luck. Carried the casket. Dave Perkins, Walter Boone, the cousins. Was it really heavy? I don't know, Freddy. That. I think I really messed up this time. <laughs> Good night. Be so responsible. I mean, do you ever loosen up? I like how I am. She's over there. I can't do this. I can't. Yeah, you can. Did you take a picture of her afterwards? Why would I? Just of her face, did you? Stop it, Franny. When we're born, people take all kinds of pictures of us. When you go, it's as if everybody's ashamed of you or something. Are you coming? I think she's all right. Did you bring a vase? I'm going to plant them. They're going to die, Franny. Well, then I brought them to the right place, didn't I? I can't remember musical chairs. Why do you keep going on like that? I'm not asking you, I'm asking Mama. You know what? I'm gonna go back. Are you coming? I used to love that game. Going round and round. I still love circles. I love how things go round again.
Look at that. I'm a zero box. We're storing it in the attic. <laughs> Our future home, Francis. Oh. Speaking of the future, Franny, we've been mulling over some things we'd like you to think about. Yeah. When are you two going to get married? Were you going for a record for the world's longest engagement? Franny, this is serious. It's about money. Oh, Mama told me about that. We get $25,000 each. The house belongs to both of us. Only she left it in your name, because she knew you'd take care of things. <laughs> oh, I'm going to buy a horse with my money. That's not a good idea. Why not? Things might change. How? I mean, we have 20 acres. OK, my horse won't go in your half, Natalie. <laughs> Franny, listen. We've been studying our finances and yours. I don't really have any finances. Well, exactly. That's my point. <laughs> what point? We, well, Natalie and I, we, we've got long-term goals, you know, marriage, family, etc. Mm -hmm. We've been discussing what we think would be best for you and, and for us. And we think that we should sell the place. You can't. Mama left it for us to live in. Natalie will give you half the money, Francis. No. We figure we can get a couple hundred thousand. <laughs> in, period, O, oh, period. Franny, she put it in your name because you're the responsible one. It's ours, Natalie. <sighs> Mama wouldn't want this. Francis, try to see the logic in this. Oh, I'm not letting you sell this place. Not now, not ever. I'm not going to let you. Franny. <sighs> Franny, stop. Can't you ever listen? Look, if you don't want to stay here, if it's not fancy enough for you and whatchamajigger, then leave. I don't care. Right, all you care about is yourself. At least I'm not selling our heritage. Oh, please. This place was built by hand. You don't even know about the floors. Since when are you the family historian? Narrow pine flooring? White oak subflooring? Made from our trees? What's she getting here? And the quilts. Quilts made by our great-great-grandmothers. You can keep the quilts. Bit by bit, people like you sold off this land. You want to ruin your life, fine. But you're not going to destroy mine. Where's Romeo? What do you got against Jake? He was here for me when Mama was sick. He helped me with everything. Well, I've never been attracted to sedate men. I know honesty and responsibility don't appeal to you, Franny, but they appeal to me. I want a secure life. Can you understand that? This place is secure. It's been in our family for over a hundred years. You want to throw it away. I want a future. I want children. Who's stopping you? It takes money. College educations, medical bills. You're not selling this place. How much time did you spend here last year? Or the year before that? I think your fellas take up most of your time. I'm different now. Right. I've been celibate for three whole days. <laughs> I am. No, I think I kept getting into trouble because I knew I could always come back here. Jake and I will have a nice place. This is where I want to be. This is my home. I'm going to do what Mama always wanted. You know, be responsible, have roots, get a job. Where? Doing what? I don't know. I mean, maybe you could find me something at the factory. The factory? You've been putting me down for years for working there. Too dull for you, remember? Too tedious for an exciting, imaginative person such as yourself. I have to get some money so I can buy you out, Nat. You cannot be serious. I am real serious. How do you expect to get that kind of money? I don't know. I'm going to figure something out. I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep this farm in the family. Franny, be reasonable. I cannot believe that you let Jake talk you into this. such a harebrained idea. He didn't. We both want this. Well, then you both can forget it.
better be late. Hey, gee, what'd they do to the windows? Hey, how come you got windows and the factory didn't? I bet people spent too much time looking out the window, dreaming they had a life, huh? <laughs> They're probably more efficient, windowless. So, uh, you want to become a part of our family? Oh, yes, sir, I do. Your sister's a wonderful employee. If I recall, she went to college and you didn't, is that right? Yes, sir, she went to Piedmont Community College for two years. She had to stop when our mama first got sick. If you want the absolute truth, I didn't like school. It wasn't school material. <laughs> you don't have experience in the type of production we do here. No, but I learned fast. When I learned to ride a bike, I got up the first time. Same with water skis. Well, actually, that took me a day, but most people don't ever get up. I mean, definitely not the first day. Do you know what we do here? Sort of. We package, sew and fold certain products. Men's underwear, <laughs> cotton and silk. <laughs> Tell me about your job experience. Photocopy centers, two restaurants, and an old age home. I only lasted two days. The smell got to me. But I'm, I'm more reliable now. Then there was the courier service. I drove around a lot delivering stuff packages and stuff. I mean, it could have been anything. For all I know, I could have been delivering drugs. <laughs> but I wasn't. Are you okay? I have a little bit of headache. Oh, you should probably take the day off. <laughs> it's been very nice meeting you, Francis. I hope you'll be very happy here. Oh, I got the job? Yes. Oh, don't you want me to take a test? Well, Natalie will be here shortly. She'll show you around. I'll be very happy to take a drug test. That's not necessary, Francis. A lie detector test? No, if you just take a seat in the outer office. You know what? I've always wanted to take a lie detector test. I actually thought that would be fun. <sighs> I want to thank you so, so much. I won't let you down. I'll do a fantastic job. You won't be sorry. <laughs> into garments. They get credit for the number they do. You can pack or sew labels. It's easy. Who makes most? Depends on how fast you go. It's pay by the piece. I'll pack. Be a great packer. You can start now if you want. That sounds thrilling. Why don't you take the middle position? Terrific. You're not going to start in, are you, Franny? I'm not doing anything. as a favor to you. I appreciate that, Mr. Osteen. You found her something downstairs? I did, sir. She's not really suited for office work. I know. Well, she's probably not even suited for factory work either. No, sir. Well, just, just keep an eye. I will, sir. Now, how long do you think she'll be staying on with us? Oh, not long. Franny doesn't stick to things much. Good. Good. Uh, you got a couple of aspirin out there? I'll see what I can do, sir. All right. How's the kid? Don't ask. 
She was up all night, eat rash. Baking soda. She's gonna clear them right up. Ooh, it's like an oven in here. I always heard she was hot stuff, didn't you, Grace? <laughs> <laughs> Probably better I don't hit someone my first day. Hey, Franny, why you been hiding? Because I didn't want to see people like you. <laughs> Franny, back in town. Oh! Looks like the boys are glad she's back. count for an average day? About a thousand. A thousand? How much do you make for that? Sixty dollars. Sixty dollars? Oh my god. Mm. No snacks, except at break, and no eating on the line. Sorry. Why didn't y'all tell me? You didn't ask. I got mixed up on my cardboard. Going <laughs> up. Skirt tied him up. I had that on earlier. TV. Hey, you still right here, Frank? Drop dead. <laughs> Oh, I didn't see you. I uh, know. <sighs> Is it okay to be here? Yep. I don't know the rules. <laughs> this is fine. <sighs> How long have you been here? Oh, uh, not too long. Ten minutes. Don't mind me. Go ahead. Take a nap if you want. Thanks. <laughs> <sighs> what do you do here? I'm the foreman. The foreman? Mm-hmm. Oh, is it okay for you to talk to me? I'm a, I just pack. I'm a packer. <laughs> I'm Reuben. I'm Franny. I know. Uh, yep. Yeah. Everybody's heard about me. Well, the first day's always the toughest. Most of them quit after the first week. You can get past that. It gets easier. Hang in there, Franny. Thanks. Congratulations. For what? Less than a day. Oh, I ache all over. Hmm. I made fifteen dollars. I oh, wish Mama was here. <laughs> She'd say, "I'm so proud of you, Franny. You didn't quit." <laughs> you think she can see us, Nat? Maybe she was looking down at the factory and she saw me working. <laughs> I was proud of you, Franny. I bought his chicken for supper. Thanks. You remember Daddy loved chicken? Mm. You ever wonder where he is? Not really. I ate most of it. There's two wings and a thigh left, but I couldn't.
couldn't stop myself. It's okay. Who's Reuben? Reuben Mason? I don't know. The one at the mill? Yeah. Who is he? He's nice. Solid. Too bad. Dependable. Like Jake. That's <laughs> sad. Did he ask you out? Uh, no, he's spying on me. <laughs> if he asks you out, say yes. Another Jake. <laughs> no, thanks. Today I'm going to make more than $15. Jake and I spoke to the realtor about the house. I don't want to hear it. Think you're ever going to fix this blessed thing? <laughs> Dream on, baby. How long till break? 15 minutes. I'm dying. Ethel! Where is she? Ethel's probably in the bathroom or something. I gotta go. They'll dock. Stupid rule. are antiquated. There's nothing wrong with our equipment. Nothing wrong with the equipment. Fairings on 6, 7, and 9 are all making metal. They're worn out. Well, we can't afford to fix them. Oh, well, that's the, that's the bottom line. It's about the money. If the workers just use the machine... It's not about workers. Work. It's about greed. It's cheaper to patch up the employees than it is to modernize the mill. Ruben, if you just draft a report, we'll fix it all. You're not going to do a damn thing. There's a dozen of my reports in your desk right now. You want something more official? Take this down. This place is a danger zone. What do you think you're listening to? That? How's she doing at work? Fine. She hasn't really been herself. She hasn't even been going out. <laughs> well, that's an improvement, isn't it? I thought that's what you wanted. I think it's the house. She's clinging to it. She'll get over it. Not so sure. She's pretty determined. Two more minutes. Hello. Franny, you there? Is this the underwear map? Well, we distribute to all the red dots. That's the whole state plus. Mm. Mm. You did what? I put these cards in the underwear asking if anybody knew where Daddy was. And I told them to call me. Brent? How dare you jeopardize your job and... I don't care about my job. Well, I care about mine. You cannot use the factory as a detective agency. When I find Daddy, he's going to be so... Forget about him. He forgot about us. No, he hasn't. Plant and sage. I bet Daddy loves fresh herbs. He never struck me as the herb type. Everything's going to work out, Nat. You'll see. This is going to blow up in your face. Like everything, every idiotic plan you ever had. Another Franny bomb. Daddy cried the night he left us. Did you know that? When I talked to him, his voice was all... broken. You're making that up. No, I'm not. I bet he still cries about us. Franny, you know we have to sell this place. 
Jake says the taxes alone will... Tell Jake to keep his nose out of this. The yearly taxes are $4,600. I'm getting a second job. <sighs> I've saved already $200, plus the money that Mama left. <sighs> Don't worry. It's under control. If you expect me and Jake to sit around for 50 years while you... Yeah, who is Jake, anyway? Jake? Some little bank clerk that works in a little bank in the mall? And that doesn't give him the right to make decisions for us. And you have no right to forfeit our future. I told you I take care of things, okay? I'm the one who takes care of things, Franny. Natalie will do it. That's all I ever heard. Nobody ever asked you to do anything. All you had to do was be beautiful and make people laugh. Well, you're not the smart one. Sometimes you end up being the clown. Ooh, it's bitter. I thought Sage was sweet. How come everything's different now? We put the place on the market, Franny. God. I like the way things used to be. I used to be somebody's daughter. Not anybody's daughter now. Who am I now, Nat? You know what the problem is? We don't have fun anymore. Let's go to the fair. Mama would want us to. She loved fairs. Biggest hog contest. Can we stay till night? We can have corn on the cob and ribs. Mm. Big hogs don't make good barbecue. Did you know that, Jake? I always thought it was odd because the only thing that they could be was like lard or sausage. <laughs> I always thought the prize should go to the tastiest hog. I'm sorry, but you know, I just never knew that you know so much about livestock. A lot of things you don't know. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Sweet, huh? Mm. Oh, sweet, you. Mm. All right, come on in now. Get one of these little porkers in Bang. one minute. And you win $200. $200? $200. You're out of your mind. I need the money. You can't catch a pig? Yeah, just watch me. Now, who's next? I am me. I'm next. Come on in here now. It sure is a short skirt for pig scrambling. <laughs> Hi, hi, hi. Hey, I don't like bacon, okay? Come on, young lady. We ain't got time for y'all to develop a relationship. Okay. Be nice. I'm really a nice person. All right, Charlie, set him up in there now. Okay. Um, I'm ready. Let him go, Charlie! She's got four! Every time you open your mouth, Jake. <laughs> Don't you ever talk to Jake like that again. Hi, oh, piggies. I bet you guys could get a farm going. Hi. 
that. Uh, how much would one cost? $75. Feeder pigs are high now. Uh, would you sell me three for 200 Cut the price? Oh, I don't know. Cash? Oh, cash. That's different. Pick out any three you want, back your truck up, and you'll be in the pig farming business. I'm a truck. Can't be a pig farmer without a truck, honey. Don't worry. I'm a pig farmer. I am very definitely a pig farmer. Uh, do pigs nap this time of day? Well, they sleep on and off all the time. Why? Well, I was thinking I could put them in my car while they're sleeping. Oh, I don't think so. Or my trunk. You know, I could leave it open a little so they could breathe. They're your pigs. Thank you. Share of the place, okay? What? What did she say? This is none of your business, Jay. Take those things back. I can't. Why not? We found it. Now, I happen to know for a fact that the county frowns upon. Screw your facts, Jay. They're my pigs. They're going back to my place. Then you can figure out how to get them there. Dead? Yeah, it's uh, unique. <laughs> Looks like uh, you could use a little help there. Why don't I give him a lift? Oh, I'd really appreciate that. Hey, you still got those pens? Yeah. We got us a ride, piggies. How'd you know where everything was? There was a pig pen and everything. Well, I've been here before. Yeah? When? I don't remember. I don't even remember hearing anything about you. Well, it was a long time ago. Yeah, we used to buy eggs from your granddaddy. Come out here with my father of a Sunday afternoon and 
Sometimes we'd buy a chicken. Thanksgiving, we'd come get us a fresh turkey. What did my grandpa look like? Your grandpa? Well, let's see. He, uh, he was tall. Not my height. Leaner. And he was tan. He was always tan, even in the winter. And he had big hands. Big, naughty-looking hands. Strong hands. What color were his eyes? Well, you don't believe me, do you? What color? Same color as your eyes. Except he wore glasses. Now, I'll tell you something that you didn't know. My mom and your grandma were friends. Did you know that? No. Her eyes were blue. <laughs> well, um, I'd invite you in for coffee, but my sister's a little mad at me. It's all right. So, anyway. Anyway. Yeah, it's a fine old place, all right? Yeah, it is. I don't know, there's just something about it. It seems like home. Sorry about your mama passing, Franny. Thank you, Reuben. Hey, you know, I, I remembered something else about your granddaddy. He was very serious and good. He was a good person, like you. Me? Good? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm good, but I'm a mess. I mean, if you knew me, if you really knew me, you'd run. <laughs> Franny. Where have you been, anyway? I mean, everybody knows how I am. Everybody's wrong. So maybe sometime, uh... Well, maybe I could take a rain check on the coffee, huh? I can't. Sorry. I'm sorry. his bill. <laughs> Get that bill. <laughs> Do you hear the one about the um, man his wife was sick? Are you hungry? I'm talking too much. Hmm. My mama just died. Did I say that already? Hey, we're supposed to be having fun. <laughs> Where? Outside. Okay, handsome. Yeah, I like to laugh. That's that's why I tell the jokes. You know. Hey, <laughs> Not really, Donald. Wait a minute. Stop, okay? Stop it. 
fucking stop it! What are you? A tease? Everybody knows you. You're Franny, the good time girl. Why don't you go back inside and tell everybody the good times were over? How are your pigs? Fine. You sure about that? Yeah, why? I, mean, I don't know, you look, uh... What? Rotten? Worried. I went out last night. That's nice. No, it's not. I didn't even invite you in for a glass of water. I, and then I go and do something... No, I, I'm a mess. Oh, we could sure use some rain, huh? Rain makes me sleepy. Storms are better. <laughs> what? Nothing. You make me laugh. Oh, yeah. That's me, the Joker. Yeah, I heard that about you. I picked up another jerk last night. Did you hear that, too? No. Well, I felt I should tell you. You don't owe me anything, Franny. Maybe he wasn't a jerk. Maybe I was. Anyway, nothing happened. Surprised him. Surprised me, too. We're almost friends, huh? Almost. <laughs> Strange. What is? Most guys would have been all over me by now. Since you like jokes, I made up a joke, okay? Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Oh, who's there? Dewey. Dewey who? Do we want to have lunch together? <laughs> So sad. Well, it's my first joke. <laughs> it's really bad. Dewey. <laughs> well? Now? It is lunchtime, yeah. Out in public? I think that's what friends do, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, how would I know? <laughs> Did you hear the one about this lady and her geese? There was this not to need lady. And she... <laughs> wait, Ruben, wait for the punchline. <laughs> okay, so she takes him out for a walk. You're gonna land us in jail. You and your ridiculous schemes. What I do? You might have lost me my job, Franny. I knew this would happen. I knew it. I'm not a missing person, Bureau. I know. That's your name, is it not? And your address? Yes, sir. The customer called us. She found that card in the package of our underwear. Now, according to that card, you're looking for... My father? You're fired, Miss Vaughn. Oh, I can't be. Really, I can explain. See, when my mama died, I didn't have anyone left. I mean, nobody. Sure, I have Natalie, my sister, but she has Jake, and he... Anyway, I just knew if I could find my father, I could be somebody's daughter again. So, when I saw the map, I figured... Just phone. Please. Killing me, Franny. I'm only suspended, Natalie. Mr. Osteen said I could come back in two weeks. Look at you, you and that damn pig. She thinks she's a dog. I'm sick of worrying about you. You wanna hit me? Make you feel better. 
Come on, go ahead. Hit me in the head. Hit me hard. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Tempting. <laughs> I love you. Did you know Reuben used to come here a long time ago? Mm-hmm. Really? Well, where was I anyway? You're never gonna slaughter her, are you? Alice, are you kidding? I love her like a sister. So much for pig farming. Hello. Are you the person looking for Frank Vaughn? Matt! I found him! I found Daddy! Hello. Yes, I am the person looking for Frank Vaughn. Violet Vaughn. So, I'm his third wife. I thought I was his second wife. He never mentioned a wife over in... Silcope. It's about 200 miles from here. He never mentioned any children, either. There's two of you? Yes, ma'am. That's Frank, all right. A lot of things he never mentioned. Like why he couldn't hold down a job for more than six months at a time. I get that from him. And why he couldn't go a single day without liquor. I guess you called because you found my note. My son found it. In a brand new package of underwear. You don't ignore a note in a pair of men's underwear. Sorry. <laughs> Do you love your daddy? So did I. Long, long time ago. Do you know where my father is? Honey. Everybody knows where Frank Vaughn is. Do you know a man named Frank Vaughn? Are you kidding? He practically qualifies as a resident. I'll tell him you're looking for him. Frank, you get a woman at the end of the bar that wants to talk to you. She was there. All my life, all I dreamed about was how great it would be to see my daddy again. I couldn't wait for him to hug me and tell me how much he loved me. And when I found him, I, I just ran. I'm sorry, Fran. He's just a drunk. I know. How do you know? 
told me. He treated you like a china doll, but he made her life miserable. Why didn't she tell me? You were never here. He was a rotten husband, Franny. Here. Who is this? I think that's great great grandma Delia. I wonder what she was like. Nobody ever talked about her. Why? I don't know, some sort of family secret. She looks like this blissful kind of free spirit. <laughs> she looks a little like you. Hmm. Oh. I wonder why everybody wanted to keep you a secret, Delia. It's my fun. As far away from you as I can get. Why? I'll be staying with Jake and his parents. You're leaving me alone? Why? Because I'm sick of you and your irresponsible behavior. Because I want a decent life with a husband and a home of my own. Because I want some peace, which is something you will never comprehend. And if you think your little show managed to stop anything, you're mistaken. Those people had no interest in the house. It's the property they want. It's a real bad day. It's a lost day. It's a lost sister day. Oh my, it's not a good day at all, is it? Yeah. You know, just think this time next year, we're gonna be married, we'll be sitting at our own table. Will we ever afford it, Jake? Well, yeah, once we sell that house of yours. Natalie? Sorry. Are you still worried about Frances? She's gonna end up like Mama. Alone. Dumped by some drunk. She'll always have us. We're gonna have to take care of her. We already do.
being the punchline. How is he? I don't know. The doctors won't let anybody see him. His arm is gone. Take a deep breath. Nobody's allowed to visit him yet. And how's that gonna make him feel? No visitors? No arm? Oh. <laughs> Natalie didn't know exactly what to do. She didn't know exactly what to say. How's it going? Oh, joke book. <laughs> what did he want? Mr. Osteen. Well, he said everything's gonna be fine and that he's gonna take care of everything. <laughs> I bet. Hey, how's the food here? Let's see. Ugh. Awful. <laughs> I'll bring pizza next time. It's nice of you to come. Well, thank you, Ruben. You kicking me out? <laughs> I just meant I know you're busy. <laughs> At least you got a view. Onion or meatball? On the pizza. You don't have to bother with me. I'll splurge. Uh, pizza with everything. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> Are you a nurse? No, I'm... I'm just a friend from the factory. You must be Francis. Yes. <gasps> oh! May I... Now look at you, darling. Oh! oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, you know you sound like your mother. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Fine. No, spectacular, actually. <laughs> Ruben's depressed and, and frightened. Need someone to cheer him up. I hear you're very good at that. Sure. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> it was very nice meeting you, Mrs. Mason. Arlene. Arlene. Uh, uh, what time would you be here tomorrow? Well, I don't think he's up to a lot of visitors right now. What time, dear? Noon. Yes, ma'am. Bye bye. <laughs> I used to detest housework, Alice. Now I can't wait to get home and start scrubbing. I cracked up, huh? <laughs> the 
looks beautiful. <laughs> but what's wrong? It's too quiet. We need some people here. Lots of people with plates of food on their lap and music, kids crawling around on the floor, making a mess. So Natalie could pace around nervously, picking up all the little crumbs. <laughs> we just have fun. We need some people, Alice. Yeah. We do. Mm -hmm. Maybe you shouldn't have taken time off from work to come down here. I didn't. It's my lunch break. So I can't stay long. You shouldn't be here at all. Why? Why not? Because I don't want your pity. I don't want you cutting up my pizza, wiping my chin off. I don't need it. I have no intention of wiping off your chin, Reuben. And I don't feel sorry for you, okay? Good sir. Move over. What'd I do? <laughs> Nothing. My mother put you up to this. Nah. I mean, she prodded me along a little bit. But I was coming back all the time. Good. I've known a ton of guys, but... Nothing like you. You're different. I was always here. I wasn't. I mean, I was here, but I wasn't really. I know. I know, I used to watch you. Watch me? Mm-hmm. I went to your farm once. I guess I was 12, you were well, probably 14. A woman. I was too intimidated to talk to you. <laughs> I promised myself I would. I had it all planned out, what I was going to say, what you were going to say. Well, anyway, my dad and I got there, and you were all dressed in faded overalls and pigtails. And all I could do was just stand there and look at you. I was just a foot away from you, but the words wouldn't come. I guess my dad knew I had a crush on you. He took your grandpa, went into the barn. I guess he thought if he'd leave me alone long enough with you that I'd get the nerve to speak. Did you? No. Shoot. I wish you would have. Then I could be different. You could have uh, helped me become normal. Well, now, why'd I want to do that? Hmm? Why would anyone want to change you, Franny Ball? Reuben said that you and my gran were friends. Best friends, dear. Did she ever mention my great-great-grandma? Delia. Yes. What was she like? Your great-great-grandma, Delia, had plenty of passion. She was married to a good man, really. But one day, she met a man who made her sick with love. He promised to take her away, far away from North Carolina, all the way to a farm he had in Kentucky. She left her family, and she and this man traveled for weeks until they reached his homestead, where she was to begin her new life. One day, Delia saw a man she'd known from her old home. She, How'd you come to be in Kentucky, she said. 
Well, did you? He said, we're nowhere near Kentucky. This is North Carolina. North Carolina? Her lover had taken her around in circles all that time. She was only seven miles from home. She left him. Came back here to Silk Hope. To her husband? He took her back. But the community didn't. They refused to forgive her. Finally, she had a child. Great-grandma Rose. Yes, Rose. When Delia's husband died, community turned their backs on her. She had no one to turn to. Finally, she was forced to return to the man who tricked her. I thought family stories were supposed to have happy endings. Poor dear, yeah. Hey. Hey. How you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing good. What's that? They want me to sign the termination papers. What? Well, they think because I'm disabled now that. Did you tell them to stuff it? They're offering me a settlement, Franny. What was all that rehab stuff for, Reuben? To work, right? Or don't you think you can still do the job? Oh, I can still do the job with one hand tied behind my back. <laughs> I knew you had a sense of humor. I'm sorry. For what? It's not any of my business, really. No, it is your business. I care about what you think. You do? Yeah. Why? Because I admire you. You know how to live. Most of us run around doing what we think we're supposed to do, and I'll tell you what, after going through what I've been through, it makes you stop and think. I'm not putting things off anymore. Now, fun is a part of life, and you always knew that. Well, I kind of overdid the fun part. But <laughs> yeah, but at least you did it. Uh-huh. Don't be scared, Franny. You can't fire Reuben. He's the best foreman y'all have ever had. I mean, check out the statistics. His line's way more productive than anybody else's. His past performance isn't the point. Because of his disability, he's now a safety hazard. Why don't you ask the assembly line workers if they feel safer with him or without him? I have a petition with 30 names on it demanding his return. Employees don't decide who'll be foreman here, Francis. I do. Well, they're prepared to go to the state safety board about the mill's flagrant disregard for their safety. Uh, now there's no proof of willful negligence. Oh, really? Well, I wonder why that reporter from the Raleigh News and Observer's been nosing around. He's left Reuben a dozen messages. You know, they're going to write an expose on the mill, one of those, oh, yeah, the Pulitzer Prize things. What was the name of that guy again? Who? The reporter. Oh, I just made that part up. <laughs> All right, this is ready. What, what do you want to go wear? Um, petunias. Petunias. Sweet peas. Sweet peas. And zinnias in the corner. Well, I thought we were having watermelon in the corner. Oh. Something I can do for you? You mind if we take a look around? Yes, I do. Well, we plan on making an offer on the property if it meets our... No sale. But I spoke with the realtor this morning. Well, we changed our mind. Are you sure about this? Positive. Don't lecture me. I'm not going to say a word. A person can't let go of something they love without a fight. Couldn't agree with you more. It's my home, Reuben. 
And I think it's time we celebrate me getting out of the hospital. How about if I take you to dinner tomorrow night? How about I make you dinner tomorrow night? Devil chicken? How about that? Match my mood. Oh, <laughs> oh! Oh no! No! What did you put in this gravy? The usual. Nothing special. Save room for pie. Coconut cream. Home cooked pie? Well, uh, country cooked. Like Alice likes country cooking too. I wanted to do something great for you. You did. it over with our legal advisor here and we all agree we want you back on the job <laughs> sure it's a beautiful night it's so peaceful Another knock knock joke. You did? Mm hmm. Okay. Knock knock. Who's there? Dewey. <laughs> Dewey again. <laughs> okay. Dewey who? Do we want to get married? Grandma's dress instead of Mama's because Grandma had a great marriage. Mama wasn't so lucky. Who'd have thought you to be me the author? Well, you and Jake are such slowpokes. Mama'd be crazy about Reuben, huh? You did exactly what she wanted, Franny. Because yeah, I've gone and settled down. No, because you're happy. That's all Mama ever wanted. Hi, Reuben. Take thee, Franny, to be my lawful wedded wife, to have and to hold. From this day forward, till death do us part. 
I, Franny, take thee, Reuben, to be my lawful wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forth till death do us part. I now pronounce you man and wife. I love it. Perfect. Well, yeah, of course it's perfect. It's a model home. <laughs> Just what we've been looking for. It's too big for us. We'll grow into it. We can't afford it. We'll use the money we get from selling the farm. Well, I, I, I just think we should have the marriage first and then the house. <laughs> what are we waiting for, Jake? Tell me, what are we waiting for? Baby, I got some bad news. Jake came by and they got a firm offer. Oh, we can't sell the house. It's a good offer, Franny. And technically the house is in Natalie's name. We love this place. Natalie doesn't. I know that. Look, it's a letter from Delia. My dearest Rose. How could I have been so foolish? I brought shame to my family and myself. I still suffer, reliving the humiliation. Reuben, she's talking about that man, you know, the one who tricked her? So much so that I'm afraid I shall end my days here in Wildwood. Wildwood Sanitarium? Wasn't it? It's an insane asylum. <laughs> Poor Delia. But he has left me a sum of money. I'm determined to put this money to good use. We must build a home in Silk Hope for you, Rose, and for all the generations of women to come. Listen, the house must stay in the family and never be sold so that no matter what happens between them and the men in their lives, they'll have a home, a safe haven. Love, Delia. How's Alice? Well, sweetheart, I don't think Franny invited us here to discuss her pigs. <laughs> We've accepted the offer. You'll get 50% of whatever we have. I'm not moving out. It's from Delia. It's real clear. This house has to stay in the family. Francis. You know the feeling I've had about the house. It all makes sense now. It's, it's like... Delia was guiding me almost. This letter's not legal and binding. You talk some sense into her, Reuben. She's making perfect sense, Jake. You know what? Sometimes I'd ask about Delia, but Mom would get vague. All right. Francis, I think that what you're doing to Natalie is unfair. You were forcing her to choose between us. And besides, that piece of paper would not stand a chance in a court of law. What about the laws of the heart, Jake? I guess you don't know about that. I'm glad that we've worked out some financial arrangement, Reuben. And I'm pleased that you'll still be a part of the family. Family, my eyeball. You could have gotten a ton of money, Reuben. They owe you. I don't need a ton of money. I got everything I want right here, Franny. Go on, take it. It's enough to buy out Natalie.
will be our home now. We'll raise our children here. We'll tell them about you and overalls and me being too shy to speak. We'll tell them about Rose and Delia. They'll protect this land and take care of it, and they'll pass it on to their daughters. When we have a little girl, can we call her Delia? Hmm. You bet we can. to you? Are you? Did he call off the wedding? He lost all the money. It's gone. I knew it. I knew he was up to something. I'm going to hit him so hard. He invested. He bought on the margin. He didn't tell me. So the jerk lost all your money? I kept asking him when we were going to move, when we were going to get married. He, he kept making up excuses. He knew the money was gone. He didn't have the guts to tell me. I'm going to kill him. He didn't do it on purpose, Franny. Not the money that hurts. Not being able to trust him hurts the most. We came to the right place. She sure did. <sighs> That's why Delia built this house. So we'd have a safe place. No matter what. No matter what. Ooh. Welcome. Carolina skies, that's where I'm known to be. Carolina skies, that's where I'm known to be. <laughs> 